On March 15, 2011, Martin Sims was wandering down the streets of Carson, California. His clothes were ragged, he was filthy, and gibbering like a madman with a full beard and long, unkempt hair. His body was covered in scars, but he showed no signs of malnutrition. What made Martin's sudden appearance so remarkable? He'd been missing for three years. When he was interviewed by police, they asked him where he'd been all this time. They couldn't believe his answer. He'd been trapped in an IKEA since 2008, but this was no ordinary IKEA. This was a dangerous anomaly that would come to be known as SCP-3008. Martin's strange answers in his interview were laughed off by his interviewing officers, who assumed he was either crazy or under the influence of something, but they caught the attention of an SCP Foundation field agent embedded in the precinct. The report was passed up the chain to a local site director who approved a detachment of Foundation field operatives to look into Martin's case. While he was reluctant to lead the Foundation agents back to the offending IKEA, the Foundation can be extremely persuasive. His screams of, please, I'm begging you, don't take me back, don't make me go back, were noted but ultimately disregarded. When the SCP Foundation had triangulated the position of SCP-3008, which was indeed an active IKEA, the entire retail zone was closed and barricaded under the pretense of a severe black mold infestation. Armed Foundation personnel also arrived on the site shortly after, based on Martin's vague statements that there were creatures of some kind inside. Due to his deteriorating mental health, Martin was unable to provide a great deal of lucid information on the specific traits of SCP-3008, but one phrase he kept repeating was, bigger on the inside. Once researchers were satisfied that Martin had delivered all the pertinent information he was able to, he was administered foundation amnestics to erase his memory of the last three years and return to his family. A cover story was formulated. Martin had been kidnapped and abused for three years by a mentally unbalanced stalker in downtown Carson. He'd been able to escape as said stalker took his own life out of guilt, a suicide that the Foundation expertly fabricated to make their cover story airtight. With the loose end of Martin Sims taken care of, the true observation of SCP-3008 could begin. A base set around the perimeter of the mysterious IKEA kept a 24-hour watch on the building, covering all potential entrances and exits. No exploratory missions had yet been approved by the Foundation Ethics Committee, so they first wanted to perform a week of external observation to see if any of the store's anomalous properties extended beyond the confines of the building. After a week of nothing, it appeared they did not. A local site director approved of the use of 20 disposable Class D personnel to explore the interior of SCP-3008. The D-Class operatives would be split into four squads of five men, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta Squad. Each would be assigned a different quadrant of the store and would deliver information back to the control team on site via a live audio and video link. Three of the four teams upon entering the store reported nothing out of the ordinary. Neither the audio or video they were sending back indicated anything different from a standard IKEA store, from the flat pack wardrobes to the Swedish meatballs. Team Delta, however, suddenly began experiencing a scrambled audio and video connection. Shortly after, communication with Team Delta dropped off entirely. They disappeared somewhere inside the store and haven't been seen since, with one notable exception. After the disappearance and the extraction of teams, Foundation researchers classified SCP-3008 as Euclid because its anomalous properties were at least confined to the interior of the store, and even then seemingly not the entire interior. The anomalous area within SCP-3008 became known as SCP-3008-1, and containment appeared to be 100% secure. There was no telling how many people had already gone missing in the store over the years, but the disappearances must be stopped. The Foundation maintained constant surveillance around the perimeter of SCP-3008, but it appeared they could prevent any further incidents by simply preventing other civilians from accessing the IKEA store. Martin's ravings about monsters were assumed to just be the product of delirium, until a surviving member of Delta Team suddenly reappeared. The date was November 3, 2011. It was a cold night, a few hours after what would have been closing time if the store were still active and seven months after the extraction teams had disappeared somewhere in the confines of SCP-3008. There had been no anomalous activity outside the store since the perimeter was first secured, and the Foundation researchers hadn't expected that to change, until the last surviving member of Delta Team came barging out of the store's entrance. Startled field operatives were amazed to see him again, but they were even more amazed to see what was following him out of the store, repeating the same phrase, the store is now closed, please exit the building. Despite the fact that the entity chasing the Delta Team survivor was wearing the yellow shirt and blue pants of an IKEA store employee, the being definitely was not human. 
It was around 7 feet tall with no visible face. The entity had grossly extended limbs, with each arm being around 5 or 6 feet long and ending in a huge oversized hand. The whole process was so sudden that the field agents present at the perimeter weren't able to save the Delta Team survivor as the entity reached forward with his freakishly long arms, grabbed him and twisted his head off like a child with a doll. The field operatives present drew their weapons and peppered the entity with bullets. It would later be classified as SCP-3008-2. The being appeared to collapse and die from the physical trauma, at which point it and the body of the former Delta Team survivor were taken for an autopsy by Foundation researchers. There were no biological abnormalities of the body of the Delta the team survivor, so it did not appear that the anomalous properties of SCP-3008-1 had any effect on the physiology of its occupants. He was not malnourished despite being missing for months, and the contents of his stomach looked to be half-digested food consistent with the menu of a typical IKEA store restaurant. SCP-3008-2, on the other hand, raised a number of perplexing biological questions. The autopsy revealed that the creature's clothes were actually part of its body, like an additional layer of skin. The creature lacked blood or any kind of vascular system. Even stranger, the entity didn't appear to have bones or internal organs, not even a brain or nervous system. It was a being made entirely of skin all the way to its core. How it was able to move, or even live for that matter, remains a mystery. Though when you work for the SCP Foundation, you learn to accept that some things will always remain unexplained. One thing was certain though, Martin Sims was right about his monsters. After the incident with the Delta Team, the Foundation deemed that sending manned explorations into the heart of SCP-3008 was too much of a liability and planned a series of drone-based reconnaissance missions into the anomaly. The first of these drones experienced connection issues and failed when attempting to venture into the IKEA's anomalous zone. However, However, after a lengthy period of trial and error, the Foundation was able to establish a more secure connection with its drones, even when deep into the SCP-3008-1 anomalous zone. It was only then that some of the most extraordinary discoveries were made. SCP-3008-1 seemed to break the laws of spatial reality, as the area of the IKEA's interior was at least an order of magnitude larger than its exterior. Just as Martin Sims had said, it was bigger on the inside, but just how much bigger? The Foundation has yet to find evidence of any physical term within the store that might indicate SCP-3008-1 has an end point, while an area of at least 10 kilometers squared has been uncovered in SCP-3008-1. It could, in theory, be infinite. Laser rangefinder tests, which are normally very reliable, have only given inconclusive results. Interestingly, the anomalous area doesn't have any clear visual differences from the rest of the IKEA store, except that it extends forever. An individual trapped within the confines of SCP-3008-1 wouldn't even realize they've entered an anomalous zone until they tried to locate an exit and leave, at which point they'd find they were already hopelessly lost. The geography of SCP-3008-1 does at least appear to be consistent, so people trapped within are theoretically able to retrace their steps and escape if they haven't already ventured to too deep. According to data collected during the drone reconnaissance missions, SCP-3008-2, of which there appear to be a vast population, would wander the stores aimlessly during the day. They are unresponsive to the drone's presence and did not appear to be aggressive. While the physical descriptions of these creatures could vary slightly, they all follow the same overall trend. Clothes, consistent with an IKEA uniform, no face, either seemingly too tall or too short, and limbs that are grossly out of proportion with their bodies. As the Foundation began sending drones deeper and SCP-3008-1, they found another incredible discovery. There was an unknown population of humans trapped inside IKEA's anomalous zone, and these people had used the IKEA furniture around them to create entire settlements and towns within the store. There were several of these towns, all of which seemed to cohabitate peacefully. Even Foundation personnel found this development in their research to be truly extraordinary. Since SCP-3008 was first identified, there have been only 14 civilian escapes. Some had been trapped inside for months, others had been in there for years, some far longer than Martin's three-year stint. While every one of these escapees has eventually been released back to their home, after a liberal application of amnestics and a proper cover story has been devised, the Foundation interviewed each of them extensively first. According to each of these escapees, the people trapped inside the IKEA have built an entirely new society across the various settlements. Contrary to the Lord of the Flies' expectations of a group of people isolated and afraid, there is immense cooperation between the trapped civilians. The food in the several IKEA restaurants in SCP-3008-1 
mysteriously replenishes while nobody's there, so there's no threat of starving, and the automatic turning on and off of the lights forms as a rudimentary kind of day and night cycle. Nighttime, however, is when things get dangerous, as the SCP-3008-2 entities, which are known to the people inside as the staff, become extremely hostile after dark. Aggressive hordes of the staff swarm the settlements at night, repeating, this door is now closed, please exit the building. The civilians inside are usually able to repel these attacks with minimal casualties, but the constant war of attrition slowly wears down those inside. The bodies of the creatures also need to be removed from the area after each attack, as the presence of corpses or even parts of corpses has been known to heighten the ferocity of the next night's attack. During the day, the staff return to a docile and unresponsive state, though they'll still defend themselves violently if anyone dares to attack. Over the course of the interviews with the 14 escapees, Foundation researchers were able to answer another of their key questions. How had so many people gone missing in the store for so long without being noticed? But the answer they received only raised many more unsettling queries. According to the escapees, there were people inside the settlements that, despite being otherwise of entirely sound mind and standard intelligence, seemed to lack very common knowledge that even a child should know. For example, some of them weren't aware of the International Space Station orbiting the Earth, or stranger still, the existence of the Statue of Liberty. This led the researchers to a frightening conclusion. SCP-3008-1 may not only be a nexus point of multiple IKEA stores in our dimension, it could be connected to IKEAs in every dimension where IKEAs exist. While it only abducts a handful of people from each store over an extended period of time, it suddenly becomes clear how this SCP was able to trap so many people without detection over such a long period of time, which in turn led to an even more terrifying revelation. The SCP Foundation may not have SCP-3008-1 as contained as they thought. It might even be tucked away in an IKEA store somewhere near you, just waiting for you to visit. After all, there's always room for one more.